Where in these five chapters does Jesus even bring up the fact that his own soul is troubled? Where does he even bring up his own suffering? You know what? He doesn't even bring up his own death except in an offhanded way that he's going to the Father. You get my drift here? It's like out of love. Do you know what happens over these five chapters? If you're John, if you're James, if you're Peter, it's like, wow, you feel like you're the center of the universe. Jesus is seriously enduring this kind of stress. This kind of, of weight is on his shoulders. And yet, he takes these five chapters and it's just summed up here. He loved them to the end. That's what we've got here. Just turning his attention solely on these guys. I mean, this how selfless can you get? The expressions of his love for his disciples. It's just without equal. You would think this would just be five chapters of self-pity, right? Get the guys to cry on your shoulders with you that this is going to be so bad. Instead, you know what he's concerned about? He's concerned about building them up. He's concerned that with the trial he's going to go through, it's going to be a massive trial for these guys too. Massive. And he's seeking to prepare them. He knows. He knows that these guys are going to be tempted to fall away. This excerpt was taken from the full sermon, No Fruit Without Death, The Upper Room Discourse, Part 1, by Tim Conway.